This is Greg Troutwine with Marine Technology TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Ian Estefan Owen, co-founder and CEO of Jaya Robotics, to discuss his company's creation and offering to the subsea robotics industry. So Ian, to start, can you provide a brief professional and personal background, uh, specifically what led you to find or to found Jaya Robotics? Yeah, Greg, for sure. Um, I grew up in a little town in South Wales called Port Talbot, um, and it's right on the beach. And at one end of the beach was a chemical works, and the other end of the beach was a, a steel works. And depending which way the wind was blowing, it was either covered in coal dust or it was covered in oil, emulsified oil. So I got a great appreciation as a kid as to the impact that we were having on the, on the marine life. Um, I ran away from home, joined the Navy, um, spent 12 years in the Royal Navy, uh, educated there as an electrical engineer. I left the Navy in 1993, joined Lockheed Martin. Uh, I was there for 12 years, director of programs, then moved to Raytheon. Uh, I ran the naval business in the UK and then moved to the US uh, with Raytheon, where I did a number of programs with them. Uh, did a stint at Woods Hole uh, on the Ocean Observatory Initiative program. From there, I went to Bluefin Robotics for a couple of years. Um, and then did a bit of a pivot. I went into the music industry and worked for Sonos, uh, the speaker company, and they go to market, new product development and business development uh, uh, departments, which was a lot of fun and a great learning experience. Uh, and then from there, I went to Aquabotics, who made uh, small ROVs and uh, other small vehicles, and then uh, founded Gyro Robotics in December of 2020. Um, so can you give a by the numbers look at Gyro Robotics today using the metrics of your choice? Yeah, for sure. So Jason, uh, my co-founder and I, we bootstrapped the company for the first nine months um, as we went through the Mass Challenge Early Accelerator program and really started a search then for, for investment. Um, we received our first check at the right time uh, in November 2021. And since then, we've worked with multiple angel groups and individual investors, and we successfully completed our close one of our series seed round, uh, June 16th last month, securing a total uh, investment of $1.6 million. That's allowed us to grow our FTEs to six, um, full, full term equivalents to six, uh, and two summer interns. And they've been awesome and could contributed more to the business than I could possibly imagine. Uh, we have received uh, two orders year to date, totaling 160K uh, for the giant box systems. Um, and really, kind of since March 2021, which is when we kicked off our product development, to bring a product to market in less than 18 months is really, I'm, I'm always, I'm blown away by that achievement. Um, our original engineering team, besides Jason and myself, uh, were all contractors, two software, one mechanical engineer. Um, they have never been in the same room. And in fact, our lead uh, software engineer, Toby Schneider, is currently in Tasmania for 12 months. And he was debugging code on a plane coming from Sydney to LA on his way back to the US a month ago. So, um, those are the kind of metrics that we've been measuring is kind of time to market and uh, how much money we've raised. Okay, well, it certainly is an interesting world today. And I personally have even met uh, three of my colleagues that, you know, recently in person for the first time. So interesting world in which we live. Um, so Ian, I appreciate that. What exactly is Gyro Robotics offering to the subsea space? And how is it materially unique from systems that already exist? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I think, you know, what is happening in the unmanned underwater vehicle industry today is really remarkable. Um, you've got people like Bill Lebo, CEO, co-founder of Dye Technologies, that's recently been acquired by Andrill. They are pushing the envelope on affordable, full ocean depth, large displacement UUVs. It is so cool. Um, the industry focus is on deeper and longer endurance systems with more sensitive sen sensors. These systems are really expensive and they're also very complex to operate and maintain, which often has an impact on perceived operational reliability, ground faults, et cetera, kind of causing vehicle aborts. What Gyro, what Gyro Robotics is focusing on is democratizing aquatic data collection with the ability to collect data over really wide areas using multiple robots working in pods. Uh, with sensor technologies getting smaller and smaller, 
Um, that provides us with more different applications. And there is an argument that multiple lower quality, lower cost sensors that collect data synoptically can provide more value than a single point high performance sensor that can only measure in one spot at one time. Um, our weather and climate models need more and more detailed data collected more often um, to get those models better refined and get a handle on where we are headed. Uh, you know, climate change is real. Making the data collection easier and less expensive is a win for our users and the planet. We took an approach where we defined the use cases at the outset, what we wanted to address based on the many customer conversations that we've had. And from that, we developed a set of MVP, minimum viable product characteristics, features and specifications, laid those out, and then alongside them, put a set of stretch targets. Uh, our design was born on a blank sheet of paper with no constraints, not based on existing architecture. Uh, we set an aggressive bomb cost and managed that really carefully as we designed the system and selected the systems and subsystems and components with that cost in mind. That said, uh, we did multiple trades on uh, performance versus cost uh, versus uh, not, not, not always going for the cheapest option but finding the right balance. Um, we also focused on the design for manufacture from the outset and spent a lot of time managing the swap C trades very carefully. Uh, the vehicle weight has gone up as we've ruggedized the system, but we've already, already identified low risk paths reducing that weight um, and leveraging the concentration of composite companies in the Bristol area, for example, to help drive that weight down. And our vehicles, which are priced at 10K each, weigh six pounds and a 35 inches long. And you can see in the video I sent you, Greg, they're real and they're operating. Um, so we've, we're really proud of what we've achieved in that area. I, I understand you have your funding in place. You've already had a couple orders in hand, um, but can you discuss in further detail where Jaya is on its development curve today? And please, uh, if you could clarify, are you a manufacturing company looking to sell Jaya bots to the end user? Are you a data company operating the Jaya bots on their mission and delivering the data, or is it some combination of the two? Yeah, our, our focus over the next two years is to sell hardware. Um, we're in production right now for the orders that we've got. Um, we are going to continue to integrate new sensors for different data collection needs. Uh, we built our team um, around that uh, capability. Uh, we want to add real-time adaptive and reactive behaviors to advance the whole system capabilities and the way that the vehicles can collect data and respond to different stimuli. Um, we also offer data collection services for customers that don't want to buy the hardware. Um, at or around year three uh, in our business plan, we see the mix between data collection services and hardware sales approaching equity. Um, and really, kind of, I think we're at the beginning of a data play. Lots and lots of tiny bots can provide really big data. Um, creating a data fusion platform that can ingest the data collected by the Jaya bots and other publicly available data sources would be an incredibly useful tool for scientists and event environmental engineers as we kind of try to better understand is what happening is with our seas, our planet, our environment, our climate, etc. How are rapidly rising inflation and supply chain woes, particularly in regards to the lack of electronics and computer chips impacting your business today? It is definitely a drag, um, and it's not just electronics. Um, you know, an example that popped up this week, we were notified of a threefold price increase um, in the propellers that we use to drive the vehicle um, due to steel prices going through the roof. And now, now fortunately, um, something popped out of the woodworks that, we, that we've been watching where we found an alternative source that was actually less expensive and a better product that we probably wouldn't have looked for if we hadn't seen that price increase. So on the, on the electronics front, we buy inventory as soon as we see it for sale. Uh, we recognize that um, our proprietary printed circuit boards after each manufacturing run will likely need to be redesigned to some level uh, so we can get components that have availability uh, and don't have those long lead times. And we've designed our boards with that in mind, um, selecting as generic components as we can and steering away from more exotic chipsets um, that we know are in high demand. That's the approach we've taken to address that issue. But it is 
it's a constant battle. Where do you see the best opportunities for Jaya today? And how do you see the company evolving in the coming five years? So I think looking at the different markets that we, that we are addressing, we look at the, the ocean observing markets, hydrographers, oceanography. Um, we look at the water quality market, a water observing market, looking at how can we apply our systems to ensure that water quality is at a known level. Um, and then you have this really exciting uh, emerging markets where we've got this explosion in the offshore renewable industry. Uh, aquaculture, I think, is going to start playing a bigger and bigger part in providing the world with its kind of needed food supplies. Um, so one of the focus areas that we are looking at is academia. Um, so east of the Rockies, uh, there are like 33 different universities that have oceanographic or ocean engineering programs or robotics programs. And one of the things I think that really differentiates us from against, against the competition is that we are truly open source when it comes to our software. You can go onto our GitHub repository today and look at our software. Um, academia have got all sorts of incredible talent working on different technologies, different software programs. If we can leverage that talent by using academia as the launch pad for our actual product, get different behaviors, different sensors, different you know, cameras, all sorts of things integrated into the platform, that comes back into our ecosystem as part of our open source software agreement with those organizations, which allows us to extend the vehicle's capabilities um, at a speed and a cost that we could never ever do as a startup um, if it was to be funded by ourselves. So that's that's a certain, that's definitely the focus area we're looking today. Um, where do we see the company evolving in the next five years? Um, based on our financial plans, years four and five, we go global. Um, and we are looking to see Dry Robotics be an, an, a business that is has revenues uh, in excess of $70 million in five years' time.